prediction in 2002 was that by 2020, there will be an event of bioterror or bioerror that causes a million deaths. And we're now about halfway along, and what do you think? Yes. Well, obviously, I desperately hope that I'm wrong uh, in this case, but, uh, but my concern really was that uh, um, uh, biotechnology is developing very fast, and there are greater risks of error or terror, uh, and also uh, um, because uh, populations are crowded in mega cities in the developing world, that is the place where uh, any epidemic, uh, you know, a natural one, uh, could become catastrophic. I mean, uh, if you think of natural epidemics like SARS, it was jolly lucky that it did, didn't get to a, a developing world city because it couldn't have been coped with so well if it did. Um, but uh, uh, I think the, the risk is that there may be some, uh, some error or indeed some, uh, some genuine terror, which if it happened in an uh, area where it couldn't be coped with adequately, could really be catastrophic. Well, I mean, I think this goes back to the theme of my book. Um, I, I think uh, there is a genuine worry uh, that uh, um, uh, a few individuals who want to cause uh, um, widespread devastation will be able to do it more easily with new technology than they could in the past. Um, and so there is, there is this risk. But I do worry about uh, uh, ex a few extremists like echo freaks who think the world would be better off without human beings, and we know there are some such mm -hmm. people. Uh, some people like that, empowered by technology, could do huge damage. Um, and uh, uh, people with the mindset of those who now design computer viruses may start doing the same with real viruses. So I think these are genuine uh, concerns. Um, and uh, uh, that's why uh, I, I do feel that it's going to be very hard uh, to uh, maintain um, freedom and privacy uh, in a world where a few people can do far more damage than they ever could in the past.